What's going on guys, it's Michael MGF, and today I am finally back to do another LEGO Star Wars Summer 2015 set review, and this time I've got the Imperial Shuttle Tidarium, and the set number for this one is 75094, the recommended ages are 9 through 14, and it has a piece count of 937, while the price point is 99.99, and so the LEGO Star Wars Summer 2015 sets have been available now since June 1st, I'm sure you are aware, they, this set in particular is actually sold out on LEGO.com, uh, LEGO but I'm not actually aware uh, if it's really the same case to with, with most stores like Lego stores and Toys R Us. I really haven't been going to a lot of them lately. Um, but I'm assuming it's much easier to get it, to get the set in store than it is to get it online uh, in terms of, you know, trying to get it from Lego directly. But uh, yeah, so I apologize for how late this review is. I really only plan on reviewing this set and the Naboo Starfighter, uh, maybe the Naboo Starfighter, before I conclude my summer 2015 set reviews. I knew it was going to be fairly limited because this set isn't exactly, you know, this, this lineup anyway of sets isn't exactly the most exciting Lego Star Wars lineup we've had in a while. But yeah, so you might notice that there is a bit of an audio difference at the moment. That's because I just finished moving into uh, this apartment here in Asheville, North Carolina, where I'm living now, and this entire room is completely empty except for my recording studio. So hopefully this whole like echoey sort of thing will only last for like a video or two uh, before I start moving things into this room because man, it's even bothering me too. So I apologize for that, but without further ado, let's get started. Before we do go on to the minifigures here, I do have to say one thing, actually two things. Uh, unfortunately, amongst many other things, I uh, sadly left at my aunt's house by accident was my minifigure stand that I use for every single one of my videos. So right now I'm using a makeshift one, which is way more wobbly and definitely beneath my standards. So I'm going to try to keep it under control as much as I can, but I apologize for that. This should only last for a video or two um, before I actually do get my minifig stand back uh, once I you know head back there. But another thing is how I'm going to mention later in this review how this set is a hundred bucks and not necessarily worth that. So um, one thing I should suggest, uh, or at least I would mention that I want to mention is that this set should have included maybe Luke 3PO and R2 and then this would have definitely have been worth that 120 bucks. So I mean that's just something I didn't mention later that I do want to mention now. Um, but this minifigure here, Han Solo in his Endor outfit is really really awesome. This is definitely the best version we've had so far. You can see we do have uh, the torso design printed onto a dark tan torso. So along with a ton of olive green camouflage and tan camouflage, which all looks really awesome. You can see that black jacket and the tan shirt underneath all of that, which is really cool to see. You also have that camo continuing onto his legs and along with a ton of belt details, which all looks really fantastic, printed onto a pair of dark brown legs. And uh, one thing, though, is that, um, of course, you know, the, the printing isn't wraparound. The uh, wraparound printing is really going to pick up uh, with the, uh, with the uh, you know, superheroes and DC sets. Um, so after this wave is, I think, when we're really going to start to see side leg uh, printing pick up. But unfortunately, it has not really started out for this lineup of Star Wars sets. As you can see, it just cuts off, um, which is unfortunate, but still looks really nice. Nonetheless, the uh, back of the torso is pretty much just a continuation of everything you see on the front with the same exact camo uh, looking equally as awesome. And then he does have the exact same Han Solo head that we had with the uh, Millennium Falcon Micro Fighter set. And uh, it does look a little emotionless on this side, but uh, still fairly accurate to Harrison Ford. If we go ahead and turn it around, you can see the more uh, preppy slash, I guess, excited facial expression um, as uh, you probably remember it from the Micro Fighter. He also has that standard pistol you've always seen. So there you go. Han Solo in his Endor outfit. Princess Leia is an equally as awesome minifigure and uh, the only thing that I really think that bothers me about the figure is the fact that she does not actually have any leg printing which is unfortunate but I mean I can kind of get by that just because of how awesome the poncho is or I guess a cloth piece whatever you refer to it has because uh, it has this really awesome like Endor camo printing on it which looks great and uh, this is actually going to be used on Qui-Gon later this year for the Sith Infiltrated I should add and it's just it's a little inconsistent looking though because you have this really awesome camouflage and then just nothing so I think that's a little bit awkward and if we lift up the poncho you'll see the design a little bit how yes it does end with like a sand blue design there but it's still I feel like there should have been some sort of detail on there like some sort of like maybe a uh, gun holster I don't know it's just you know, having the blank legs is a little bit awkward but you can see she has the exact same pistol as Han and then she also has a cookie I absolutely love that print it's always great to see these uh, this is meant to portray the uh, food that she actually gives to Wicked when she falls off of her speeder bike during that whole sequence and uh, the face though is really really awesome definitely one of the better portrayals I think we've had of Leia and uh, for you customizers out there like myself of course um, but you know Arrow fans in particular you could probably paint some glasses on that face and it could look like a pretty good Felicity smoke but uh, the hairpiece is not new we've seen it before uh, used on several different minifigures aside from Leia you know when it was first introduced back in 2009 but if we go ahead and uh, remove the hairpiece turn the head around and put the hairpiece back on you can see that we do have uh, the aggressive facial expression which is really really awesome and definitely what I would say the more preferable side uh, of the head but just remove 
removing the head entirely along with uh, this camouflage uh, poncho cloth piece thing. You can see that we do have a full on torso design uh, printed onto this torso hidden beneath all of that, which is really nice as well. Definitely love the design work here. It all looks really great. And it's a shame that it gets all hidden by the poncho piece, um, but still really nice overall. And this entire minifigure is great overall. So aside from that though, that is pretty much Leia and the, you know, the, that is pretty much the whole minifigure Leia in her Endor outfit. I definitely think it's one of the better minifigures out of this set before I freaking dismantle my uh, makeshift minifig stand here. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it for uh, Princess Leia in this set. As I said last year, this is definitely the best version of Chewbacca we have ever had, of course, because it is the only uh, other version of Chewbacca we've had. And uh, I mean, when, I, when this was introduced last year, I mean, I, I, I really did like it. I got used to it pretty quick, but then now, you know, looking at it all this time later, it's just, I don't agree with the printing on the face. I think it's really awkward and the dark brown doesn't really work for me anymore. So what I'm hoping is that for the Force Awakens sets, maybe we'll get a uh, standard brown Chewbacca again Again, with some better printing for the eyes and mouth because the eyes and mouth they really don't work for me anymore I mean they're okay it's just they are a little bit strange looking and don't really capture Chewbacca's likeness as well as I thought they did originally um, but the mold itself though the entire design of it and everything about it is fantastic and I absolutely love the ammo chain or you know the chain that he wears around him um, you know the strap so that's really great and the printing on it the fur printing on the legs always great to see that again and then you have the bowcaster and it's great to see that again as well so nothing new with Chewbacca. It's the exact same minifigure and I absolutely cannot wait to see what he's going to look like for the episode 7 says. I don't actually know the name of this rebel soldier. I'm pretty sure he has one though. It's just, I uh, I mean, I would assume so given that the Lego group printed an entirely new head for him. Um, so if you guys want to take a trip over to Wikipedia, definitely let me know uh, his name down in the comments. But for now, we're going to call him the Beard Man Rebel Soldier because that did, that that is what I think is appropriate given how massive his beard actually is. And uh, the helmet, I guess we'll start off just to get it out of the way. The helmet is the exact same Endor Rebel Soldier helmet that we've had since 2009 uh, with the dark green and gray print on it so great to see that again always been a great design and uh, just removing it though to get a better look at this head which I think is a little bit awkward and I say that because it's just yeah he's got a massive and really thick beard of course it's just I don't really agree with the the, the, the printing on the mouth like it's just it's hard to tell that that's actually a mouth under there and granted I understand why they what they were going for it's just I don't really think they did it too well it does look a little bit strange and I even screwed up what I, I didn't even know it was a beard during my analysis of this set uh, that I did way back so that's a little bit awkward but turning the head around if I can get it to you guys know how heads like get sucked to the torso when they're brand new uh, there is no printing on the back of the head I should add because of course he does have the helmet but uh, yeah so aside from that though the torso printing is really nice the name tag and everything else on it the uh, he does have the uh, you know the utility belt there with the pouches the uh, very similar camo that we saw on Han and Leia so that's really really awesome definitely love the design of this guy and the same green set for the back of the torso absolutely awesome minifigure wish I knew his name but like I said we'll just call him beard man the unnamed rebel soldier though uses that same head that I always look at as being the agent Coulson head so we're gonna call him the Coulson rebel soldier and you can see this minifigure is phenomenal absolutely the best rebel soldier figure I think we have had hands down in the olive green color with all the design work that went into the torso there with the camouflage that really awesome strap the utility belt I mean the the you know the pockets on his legs which unfortunately once again because size printing hasn't exactly become a full-on thing yet they get cut off that kind of sucks but I mean regardless though the design is really awesome the same can be said for the back of the torso it even has like sort of like a hood coming down which is really cool same exact rebel soldier helmet you know the Endor rebel soldier helmet you guys have seen it before and then like I mentioned the head which I like to refer to as the agent Coulson head because it really does look like Clark Gregg and there is no double-sided face for that head if you didn't already know and he's got a standard blaster so aside from that though that is pretty much it for the minifigures included with this set really wish Luke 3PO and R2 were included. Unfortunately, they are not, and we get these guys, though. So, there you go. All right, and on to the Imperial Shuttle Tidarium itself. You can see this set has a lot to offer in terms of its design for the most part, and it's very accurate looking, especially proportionately. Um, I mean, there are a lot of studs covered on this thing and not very many tiles were used, as you can see. But regardless, though, um, it is a pretty nice build with some pretty awesome playability features. So diving right into it, we'll start with the wings and how they fold down. The wings are actually secured in uh, with a ton of Technic, and those are pretty much what act as like the hinges to make them fold up and down. 
and uh, so you can see that's a stopping point for uh, it going into flight mode and this right here is a stopping point for it going into its landed mode so you can see both of those right there and uh, so yeah this is it in its idle position and obviously the same goes for both wings both wings are exactly the same just inverted and uh, the engines are really nice utilizing some nice uh, transparent light blue tiles very well and then um, just to give you a look at the interior actually before we go into the interior I should probably show you the playability features that are on the wings here you can see that we do have a couple of spring-loaded shooters one on each wing and uh, actually I do need to fold down the wings to make it a little bit easier for you to see because you're meant to use this playability feature when it is in its flight mode um, so yeah just folding down the wings you can see that we do have these little like um you know these like these like circular Technic pieces here and then you just push down on one and uh, then it fires out the spring loaded shooter and just putting up my hand here so it doesn't go too far away you can see how that works and it's very effective it doesn't take a lot of force to get that thing to fire you just push down on it gently and uh, the spring loaded shooter comes flying out of the thing it's really awesome so you can see we do have uh, these ga these uh these cannons right here which are uh you know uh, adjustable as you can see right there these are also adjustable because these uh both pretty much all the ca uh, guns on this thing are on uh, hinges which is pretty sweet and uh, they do have a pretty similar design uh, you know amongst each other and so if we just get this thing in its full-on uh, you know uh, attack mode here or its flight mode you can see that the uh, guns actually align which is pretty cool um, so I just wanted to show you that real quick but you can kind of see what it looks like in, in its flight mode it's kind of hard to get the whole thing on frame but you kind of get the idea and it's very uh, sturdy and very easy to hold I'd say uh, the easily definitely the easiest way to pick this thing up is just by picking it up by the main wing which is actually very sturdy so you can do that very uh, easily so that's pretty cool just wanted to note on that and uh, now onto the interior of the Imperial Shuttle Titerium we can uh, go ahead and fold up both of these and they're on a couple of uh, Technic pieces themselves making it you know very smooth and easy to open and then inside here you can see we do have a couple of extra spring loaded shooters stored on a couple of hinges there and there and along with inside here we also do have uh, the little uh, crate and on top of it you can see we do have a uh, Rebel Alliance sticker which is pretty awesome it even has like some like weathered effect on it and if we go ahead and open this thing you can see inside we do actually have a couple of thermal detonators which is pretty cool and uh, so you get a total of three thermal detonators in this set and those are always really awesome to have um, but that just uh, pretty much you can plant that right inside if I can give you a better look at that here um, that just goes right on top of that uh, like a stud that you see there in the center and it's very easy to remove and uh, put back in place um, and then you can see there are three chairs on the interior for uh, the other three minifigures aside from Han and Chewie who I guess you're supposed to uh, you know assume to be in the cockpit area so I guess we'll put uh, Leia um, over here on uh, this side and then we'll put the uh, rebel, the, the, uh, words, the rebel soldiers on the other side so uh, yeah you can just see her right there and she fits in perfectly and her poncho of course does not get in the way but her pistol might as you can see if you could cooperate with me Leia that'd be great so yeah there you go that's how that works very simple and then if we go ahead and turn it around like I said we'll go ahead and seat uh, the other rebel soldiers inside you'll notice that there actually is um, a little like a uh, station here for their blasters and it has a couple of clips just for that along with a extra backpack accessory which is pretty cool so I guess we'll go ahead and utilize that right now um, by putting their blasters on it so you can see how that works it's very basic you guys have seen things like this before but it's definitely uh, pretty nice and uh, very useful it comes in handy to get their blasters out of the way once you want them inside the Imperial shuttle Tidarium so yeah that just clips onto a basic jumper plate and it uh, comes off very easily just like uh, the the uh, crate there that had the thermal detonator so yeah you just go ahead and put beard man over here and then he sits in the chair just fine and then we'll go ahead and take our other uh, agent Colson uh, rebel soldier here and then well he sits in his seat just fine as well and they all fit into this thing and there are no mini figures left behind which is pretty awesome if you'll cooperate that would be awesome too so yeah there you go all the minifigures seated inside and uh, I should note that back there there is actually a really cool uh, screen which uh, pretty much is, I guess sort of like shows uh, has some arabesque on it along with I guess like the mission uh, plan for what they are what they're going to be doing once they get to the surface of Endor so that's pretty awesome and this just folds over them just like that and now we can go ahead and move on to the cockpit so just adjusting the camera make this a little bit easier for you guys to see um, we can see inside here we do have a couple of seats and of course you know this thing isn't to scale so you can only fit two minifigures the other two minifigures of course being Han and Chewie but just to give you a quick look at the uh, the control panel pieces you can see there those are actual stickers there and there and uh, they're really nice and definitely add a nice you know level of design there and it, it, it actually you know it actually helps getting the cockpit closed the fact that these are big slopes like that and then the minifigures are just secured in by a couple of uh, axles there into their chairs and I definitely like that design more than studs because it's a lesser lesser of a risk of like the two by two plate uh, you know coming up with the minifigure or anything like that I definitely like that you know a concept for seating minifigures inside cockpits but the entire thing closes over very easily and very smooth and uh, the cockpit cannot be adjusted it is locked in place as you see it there so uh, the stickers include those two that I just showed you in the, the um the uh, cockpit area there and then we also have um 
the sticker on the uh, canister, or I guess the crate there, the sticker on the screen that I also pointed out, but then the last sticker is uh, this ventilation sticker right here beneath the main wing. So uh, definitely pretty awesome, man. And that's pretty much it for the Imperial Shuttle Tidarium, aside from one last feature, and that feature is its landing gear. And you can see the landing gear right here just on a uh, some more Technic pieces beneath this thing, which is also pretty sweet. And I almost forgot that there is actually a, a little hinge right here, which is like, I guess, sort of like a trap door. And uh, that allows for you to, you know, like uh, launch your minifigures and let them slide out, I guess. It's sort of like a landing ramp, um, which is pretty awesome. Probably gonna take a look at the box to make sure I'm not mistaken on that feature there. Um, so hopefully this will uh, conclude this segment of the review. But my only problem with this set is that it's actually, they charge a hundred bucks with Lego Group for the Imperial Shell Tidarium. I apologize for that creak right there as I'm reaching for the box to make sure that playability feature is uh, not something more that I'm missing there. But uh, yeah, you can see though, regardless though, this thing is a little bit small. So for a hundred bucks, I would like to say that this set is worth it. It's just, I really can't because the problem being, it's just like when you get this thing built, it really doesn't look like a hundred dollar set. I mean, it's it's a little small and it's, I mean, it's a good set overall. It's just for a hundred bucks. Uh, I'm not sure about that. That's a little too steep for this set if you ask me. So ultimately it's up to you now that you've seen the set in its entirety and all the things that it does have to offer as a set. I mean, this is my first time getting an Imperial shuttle. I missed out on on the previous ones, so uh, this is definitely a first for me and pretty freaking awesome for the most part. It's just the price is uh, a little too steep if you ask me. But I mean, aside from that though, I did just find out by the way that this really, there isn't anything else to this uh, feature right here, this trap door. It's just you know sort of something that you can do. You can you know fold it down and obviously it's not really a trap door. It's meant to be the landing or you know, the, the actual like boarding ramp, but I guess you can sort of use it as a trap door given that you really can't use it as a boarding ramp. Um, so that's pretty cool how that was added in as a, a feature there held in by uh, some extra technics. So, Aside from that, though, that is pretty much it for my review on the Imperial Shuttle Tidarium. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the box and structure manual, extra pieces, and we'll wrap up this review. The box is actually fairly small for a hundred dollar set. Like I can picture the average person walking up to a shelf, seeing this box and then looking at the price tag and just flat out walking away because this set doesn't look like a hundred dollar set really. Um, but you can see we do have all the minifigures on the top and Princess Leia sporting the actual size reference. And then on the back of the box, we have a uh, quick shot of them landed on Endor with all the playability features that I just went over along with a ton of super cool renders that you can see right here of all of the characters in action and recreating various different scenes from the film and then that one of all the minifigures included with the set. So definitely a very effective but rather small box for a hundred dollar set. So the instruction manual for the Imperial Shuttle Tidarium is actually a 154 page build and you can see that number right there in the bottom left corner and then if we go to the, toward the uh, end of this instruction manual we can see that we do have all these sets included with the summer 2015 lineup and I really doubt that I'm going to review the Imperial Transport as much as I wanted to. Um, I do have the Naboo Starfighter, hopefully I'll review that but I'm definitely not reviewing the Flash Speeder because that thing looks really really lame and not worth my time. Um, but you can see though we do have a bunch of renders for all the minifigures included with the summer 2015 lineup as well. Most of which are pretty sweet. So uh, yeah, aside from that though, that is the instruction manual for the Imperial Shuttle Tidarium. The extra pieces are pretty basic for the most part, just mainly consisting of a bunch of studs, uh, one by one plates, a lot of connectors. We have an extra uh, like light bluish gray lightsaber hilt, some very basic things. But what's really awesome is we do get an extra cookie and we also do get an extra uh, thermal detonator uh, printed one by one uh, tile, which is really, really awesome. Absolutely love having extras of these because obviously they are pretty much used across the entire Star Wars universe by all characters so getting an extra one is always cool so aside from that though that is pretty much everything in this review and everything that this set has to offer so without further ado let's go ahead and wrap up what really I hope won't be my last Lego Star Wars Summer 2015 set review. We have you on our screen now please identify. Shuttle Tidarium requesting deactivation of the deflector shield. Shuttle Tidarium transmit the clearance code for shield passage. Transmission commencing. This code has been falsified. You are operating a hijacked aircraft. Take them out. Whoa, 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 wait! All right, guys, and there you go. My review on the Imperial Shuttle Tidarium. And uh, if you enjoyed my review on this set, be sure to let me know by dropping this video a like below and or your opinion on this set down in the comments. As I always say, any of which really do go a long way, especially after how much effort goes into each and every one of these videos, as uh, you guys already know. So this set, is it worth it for a hundred bucks? I mean, as I said, it, you know, earlier on in this review, once you had the thing built, it just doesn't really look like a hundred dollar set. So honestly, I'll just leave it up to 
you guys to decide now that you've seen the set in its entirety and everything that has to offer. But yeah, you can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, by the way. Links to all three of those are always down in the description below because I always post all kinds of super cool previews of uh, minifigures that I'm working on, such as the Iron Man Mark 45 suit and uh, War Machine, which I just posted the final photo of on all of those platforms. I've got four Ant Man minifigures that I'm working on for the release of that film. I'm about to be showcasing the four, uh, I almost said Force Awakens, the uh, Star Wars Rebels Ahsoka minifigure uh, that I plan on showcasing hopefully before the uh, season two premieres digital release on the 20th. At least that's the goal for right now. And uh, once again, I do apologize for the audio, guys. It's just I have nothing in this room, as I mentioned at the start of this video. So once I get some stuff in here and, uh, you know, there's more, you know, for sound to bounce off of, it won't sound as awkward because uh, trust me, this, is, this really does kind of suck. But unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about it right now. Um, so hopefully this will only last like this video and hopefully not the next. So yeah, guys, that is it for this video and I will catch you later. All right. Bye. Uh, this set is definitely worth that hundred bucks. It's really not actually, never mind. 14 and an S piece count of 637, 937, Ross, gosh damn it. I am highly <laughs> seven. Well, the price point is a uh, 99, 99, gosh damn it. I don't know actually, I don't know actually. Okay, grammar. Holy shit, that was loud. Review, or maybe found yourself inspired. This is not a showcase, Ross. The box of the Imperial Show Tidiri, the box. My Lego Star Wars wall of oh, shit. This is actually. Focus, please. Gosh damn it.